Hey, what's up guys? In this video, we're going to talk about something that I get probably requested more than anything. And uh, I'm not going to cover it fully, but I'm going to kind of dip my toe in the water and that is tuning. Today, I want to talk about snare tuning specifically. So let me give you a couple of disclaimers and thoughts before I jump into it. Um, first of all, I do not claim to be an incredible tuner of drums. I'm not a guy that's like, I can give you an exact, this is the tension drum dial this is the no this is you know these kind of things i'm very very much a trial and error person now sometimes i get frustrated when people say things like that because they're like oh i don't know what i'm doing and I, it's not that i can't tell you what i'm doing but it's that really this process is not an exact one it's a lot of just trying a bunch of different things so let me first of all tell you um i kind of have like a philosophy of of what i want in a snare what i look for so really a lot of my stuff is playing in church all right or pretty much like a live music context um, which if you're not familiar with kind of the church scene, church music we play from black gospel to contemporary, what those terms mean, uh, check out my channel. You'll see kind of a demonstration, but chances are if you're watching this video, you know something about my channel. Um, if not, again, my name is Daniel Bernard. I've got a YouTube channel of over, I don't know, 500 something videos now, 400 something, 500 something at the time of this recording um, of drum covers, tutorials, gear reviews. Um, so anyways, jumping in, assuming you kind of know what I play and what I go for. So uh, first of all, I kind of have you know three um, snare sounds that are kind of obvious, but like a high pitched, kind of a mid tempo, and then low. So specifically, the high pitched, um, all the music that we play is pretty dense, meaning there's a lot of orchestration. Um, not literally an orchestra, but there's you know keys, organ, bass, guitar, maybe a second guitar, some kind of auxiliary percussion, and then drums. So there's a lot of stuff, multiple vocals, usually group vocals, a lead vocal. So it's a very dense mix. So uh, for me, the first thing that informs is I don't want anything that's got tons and tons of overtone, really. Um, so if I'm playing, if you're playing like drums, say drums and bass video, just like a drum and bass, you got a nice like kind of ringy snare, lots of character, that's awesome. But for me at least, when I'm mixing or doing the live stuff, I pretty much want a, I don't want to say dead, but I want to find that kind of happy medium of a pretty controlled tone in my snare. So that's first of all, personal preference, but I like pretty controlled tones. Um, so for the high-pitched snare, I want cut. I want it to cut through the mix, but I don't want it to be thin. So that's the, the fine line to me is cut, but not thin. So some guys have great just crack, you know, and an attack and top end attack, but the snare sounds super, super thin um, and not a lot there. So to me, that's kind of the defining feature. Mid range, what I'm looking for is I want it just to sit uh, really well in the kind of the middle of the mix. I want kind of that, just that hit you in the, the gut. You know, um, not again, I mean, again, it sounds so obvious, but just my thought process is I want it to sit well with the other drums and stuff, but I want it just to be right in the middle of that mix. Um, again, uh, a little bit on the beefy end. So my mid range snare is really more of a mid low. And then my low snare is really more of like a gushy fat, just, you know, deep in the mix, uh, almost like what I would say, like a Bethel snare. It's what people, a lot of people call like the Bethel snare. So I have my drums tuned accordingly. So I have four snares. I got more snares than this, but I have four snares that I kind of work with right now. So my main snare is a 1967-68 Ludwig Superphonic. Pretty sure it's aluminum. I could be wrong, but I think it's an aluminum snare. Um, six by 14. Um, my second main snare that I use the most is a uh, Mapex Black Widow um, Black Panther snare. This is, oh man, I'm gonna get in trouble. Five by 14, five and a half by 14. I honestly don't remember. I need to look it up. I'll put it in here if I'm in a state, but I think it's, man, I think it's five by 14, um, but it is a maple walnut hybrid. So what that does, uh, you know, maple to me is kind of an all around warm, nice tone. Walnut is a little bit deeper tone. So what this does is it gives me that kind of gospel high end attack, but I get to keep some of the body. Also been using a really, it's a really inexpensive snare, a Tama Silver Star. Um, snare, but for the purpose of this video, we're going to be talking a lot about the um, this Black Widow snare, which Mapex. This is kind of their previous line, um, but Mapex came out with I think a whole new line of Black Panther snares. Check it out. This is the previous generation, and then my fat, kind of deep, gushy snare is a six and a half by fourteen um, Black Panther Sledgehammer, which is a hammered brass. Um, so let's talk about um, drum head choice on the um, the Ludwig Superphonic. Uh, this is kind of my mid-range snare. I want it to kind of be a fat, beefy tone, but still cut through. Um, I have a Remo Emperor Vintage coated. Um, so in a nutshell, why, what's the difference between the vintage? To me, what I've found versus just an Emperor 
which is a two ply coated. The vintage seems a little bit warmer, maybe a little rounder. So almost less attack is the maybe the um, trade off, but to me it just gives a little warmer tone, uh, just a little bit rounder tone. On the um, uh, Black Widow snare, I actually have a, a Remo coated Ambassador, which is a single ply head. Um, some people don't like ambassadors because they play too hard, they bust through them, it's a single ply head, so that may be the case. But for me, what I like with my higher pitch snares is I want it to be more open. Um, I want the tone of the snare to be open and then I want to muffle it as I want. So I have a, a small drum dot, you can use drum dot, moon gel, any of these kind of dampeners. I've got drum dots and everything. I like drum dots better than moon gels, plug for drum dots. They last a little bit longer, easier to keep clean, but all these things deteriorate no matter what kind it is, drum dots or moon gels, which you can see on this Ludwig Superphonic. But I have an ambassador coated on the um, Black Widow, so I want it to be more open and then I can control the snare sound. Uh, on the uh, Ludwig, I've got two drum dots, and this has an internal muffler, but it actually is not engaged right now. And then on the um, uh, Mapex, the Sledgehammer, I've actually got a P77 coated, which is like two ply plus a reinforcement, super thick and I've got a bigger drum dot on here. So this thing is just big, just beefy dead. Really this is almost like a like a, a sound like a sample sound, right? I mean it's it's like a side snare for those really deep um, tones. So let me kind of show you um, what uh, these two snares sound like and then we're actually gonna tune the um, Black Widow snare here. So this is my uh, Ludwig Superphonic. So I've got on, on top here I've got a uh, Shure SM57 on bottom snare. I've got a KSM32 by Shure as well. Overheads are also KSM32s. Um, so one reason why I think people, because I do get a lot of compliments on my drum tones, which thank you guys, but um, one thing to keep in mind as well, like man, I can't, I, I hear people say, I can't get my snare to sound like that. You also have to remember, I'm in a super large room, I'm in an auditorium that seats almost a thousand people. We have room mics, ambient mics. I've got, you know, nice mics on this, this set. So. Um, I've got a lot of ways to capture it that really give you a full uh, feel and tone of the snare. So I'm going to go through, I'm going to play this, and then I'm going to isolate the different microphones so you can hear what it sounds like. Now, as far as the actual tuning, because that's what people really want to know about, um, my philosophy on tuning is I begin um, with getting both heads to the same tune, the same pitch, and then I work from there. For my deeper ones, I actually want the bottom head a hair tighter than the top. I don't like the bottom to be really loose because the bottom head serves two functions. Obviously the, the tone of the snare, but also as we know, the bottom head is responsible for interacting with the snares. So for me, I want the bottom head to be tight enough where I, I have a, um, a complimentary interaction with the snare wires themselves. So I don't, want, I don't want the bottom, for me, I don't like the bottom heads ever too loose. I like it just you know, on my, my deep fat snares. I like a bottom head a little bit tighter than my top head. On my other snares, I like them to be around the same pitch. But again, to be honest, I'm not, I'm not super picky with it. I'm a tweaker. I, I, I tweak. Is that a bad thing? I don't know if that's, is a tweaker. Is that, do I, does it mean people do drugs? I, I don't know. I, I feel like that's a bad thing. But I tweak uh, my sounds a lot. So let me show you what this sounds like. Um, snares off. Okay. So this uh, Ludwig snare, it's kind of hairy. It's not perfectly in, in tune. It's old. I've got some lug, tuna fish lug locks, which those things are great. If you're not sure, I'll put a link to those as well. They just keep your uh, lugs locked in the place after you tune them. But um, to me, I like just the where, where it sits in the mix. Um, I, I've got it uh, tuned again, kind of mid-range, so. You're hearing all these other snares talk. Probably getting a, a little bit of wobble there, but again, to be honest, I'm not crazy, crazy picky because it does kind of get lost in the mix a little bit. Um, so this is what that sounds like. Um, and this is kind of, it's an old, kind of a cantankerous snare. So if you get off center a little bit, it, it does ring out a little more than other ones, but this is what it sounds like.
Okay, so mid-range. So it's got a little bit of overtones, I guess, but it's to me it's kind of on the dead end of things. Now, we play the sledgehammer. Now, usually I wouldn't like pair these two together, and um, I don't play this as like an aux snare. I play it as a main snare for songs because we'll do like uh, songs from different genres. So for me, it's not that I have a, a snare and an aux snare because these aren't too separate. Um, they're pretty similar. More, it's more like if I'm using my gospel high pitch snare, then I have this as a secondary snare if I'm playing something that's more contemporary. So this is what this sounds like. It's pretty dead. And on this side snare, I don't have a uh, bottom mic, just a top, a 57 on top. So um, this one. Sorry, I'm not hitting that very well. So it's actually pretty close to the same tune. The bottom, I keep it a little bit tighter, but again, not as much sustain, pretty dead. But again, the place I want that to sit in the mix is just, you know, more of that splat tone, right? Okay, so let's talk about my uh, Black Widow here. This is the high snare, the gospel snare. Um, I haven't played it in a while because I've been playing um, a lot of stuff with my Ludwig. So I, I love these Black Panther snares of both of them, man. The, um, which, again, this is an old generation, so this, I can't speak for the newer generations, but these are just so solid, man. The throw-offs are solid. The uh, Sonic Saver hoops are solid. The construction, they're heavy. Um, and they're only like, I think, between three and $400. So for me, the value of these snares um, is, is really, really great. So let's see what this thing is tuned at right now. Um, so we're going to detune this and retune it. So jumping into snare tuning, um, usually if you're going to tune a snare, you got to start by detuning the snare. So um, one interesting thing to think about in general is I don't want to, because these things crank down pretty tight, I don't want to just go around the drum and detune it because I don't want there to be a lot of tension here and loose tons of tension here. So I'm going to go in kind of this star pattern and, and detune it. So I'm going to start by uh, just doing like a half turn, come across, half turn around, you know, come over one, uh, half turn, and then come across, half turn, come around, half turn, come across, half turn. So I'm not um, just, you know, turning one, two, three, four, or five, just like that, because then again, I would lose tension on one side only, potentially warp my uh, room, especially on older drums, you don't want to do this, and it's you know not good for the head. In this case, I'm reusing his head, which you may not do. So now that I've got a, a little bit of ten, uh, tension off of it, I'm not going to be as picky about it. I'm going to go around just kind of here and, um, and just kind of detune it. So. Okay, so now I've got the snare head loose. So pretend that I just put this on actually, and all these lugs are loose. Right, so what I'm going to do first is get it what I'm going to call finger tight. So a lot of times what you can do is between the, um, the rim and the, the snare itself, you can put your fingers there and tighten the lugs that way. This one, it's 
there's it's so thin there's not much space so i'm just going to take my fingers and i'm going to tighten the lugs um to i can get as tight as i can with my fingers the idea behind this is that you just get into generally the same tension now again if you have older snares uh snares where the lugs are you know the threads aren't very um you know nice or they're worn out this may be difficult to do but again the idea is i want to get it to around a, a just a base tension what i'll call finger tight So I got one lug that's a little stuck, so I just went ahead and give it some help. So now I've got it all finger tight. So what I'm gonna do again and starting in like a start pattern, I'm gonna go start with like a full turn. So full turn, cross over the snare, full turn, or if it's totally loose, I'm gonna wait till I hit tension just a little bit and then do a full turn. Uh, then move over one. We're gonna go full turn, cross. This one is no tension. There we go, full turn, move, scoot over one, full turn cross, full turn, scoot over one, full turn, across, full turn, scoot over one, and so on until we get all the way around the snare drum. Okay, that one's already tight. So now we're back to where we started. So now, um, again, it's kind of a disservice to you guys because this head has already been used, so there's already kind of a ripple in it, but um, basically what I have now is I've got like a bass tension. Okay, so it's obviously not a usable tension, um, but I, I'm a little less worried about the snare getting messed up now. So I'm going to start again. I'm going to start doing, uh, I'll probably do half turns now. So a half turn. And if I start noticing there's one that has no tension, um, if I trust the drum, like I feel like it's, um, you know, there's not just a problem with the lug, I'll go ahead and do more than a half turn until I feel kind of a diff similar tension on that lug. I also want to look for ripples in this head. If I'm getting some huge ripples in the head, that means I've got something that's um, one of the lugs has less tension than the others or it's kind of an imbalance. So go half turn. So I'm trying to do this and talk at the same time. Half turn, half turn. Okay, so I brought it up a little bit more. Now one thing I do to check is the tension is place my fingers in the middle, not super hard to push down, but just enough to dampen it. And I want to tap around each lug. Um, so. So I got a little bit, one a little low there. It's also right where the moon gel is. So pretty much similar. Um, so let's see what the, uh, I already have the bottom head tuned obviously, but. So the bottom head's a little bit, sounds a little bit lower to me, honestly. Um, so my process is gonna be the same for the top and bottom head. So I'm not necessarily gonna show you the bottom head because Again, it's the same process, but I want to keep them the same tension. So I want to get the lugs all to the same tension. I'm going to keep going up because it's like a good mid, mid range, maybe. So that doesn't sound terrible, but it's not what I'm looking for. So I'm just going to keep going um, half turn, half turn, scoot over. Half turn, half turn. And another thing what I'm doing, oh, that was a loose, keep going, half turn, half turn there, um, is, well, I don't want this overtone. So I don't want boing, lots of ring. That means that the, the different heads are uh, in at different tensions or not complementary tensions. So we may come across that. Okay, so I actually don't mind that. You can tell it's got a little bit of overtone, a little bite to it, which is why this moon, this uh, drum dot, I keep saying moon gel is helping. But I'm gonna keep going a little bit more. And surprisingly, I haven't really found any, it's not ringing out really crazy, so it means it's, it's playing well with the, with the bottom head. Um, so that's good. All right, let's keep going. So now you hear that, that that ping is pretty much gone. That means, to me, that means my top head and bottom head are a lot more complimentary now. All 
I actually really like that. All right, let's see how they sound together. So I've got this one a little bit lower. So I've got one that's lower. Sometimes if you just can't seem to get it right, uh, tension the, the lug across the drum head because what that does is as I tension this one, it's pulling, right? It's pulling this way. It's not just tightening down, but it's pulling the whole head. So. Right, cross, lug, tensioning. Okay, so, man, I, I like that. I really like that. Now, the, uh, the drum dot here is gonna kill a little bit of that sensitivity, which you may not like. It doesn't let. It's a pretty sensitive um, drum, um, but again, that, that, uh, that guy's gonna kill some of that. So if I take that off, That's that ping. Some people love it. Closer I get to the edge. Not for me as much. I like a little more controlled, so I'm gonna put that drum dot back. Kill that guy. Okay, so now really I can just keep going. Let's let's check out the bottom and top together. So I can keep going. I almost don't want to because I like this. Okay. I can move that drum dot a little bit closer to the edge. Okay, so um, I'm at the tension to me where I'm, I'm gonna start beginning the trade off between body and pitch. So as the pitch goes up, I'm gonna start losing body. In my opinion, I'm at that kind of cross point where I've got the marriage between body and pitch. It's about as high as I wanna go, where I've got a great high pitch, still have lots of body. If I start to tighten it up more pitch, start to lose a little bit of body, which is fine if you want that, because if you just want it to cut through more than anything, continue to crank the pitch higher and higher, um, and you may lose a bit of body, but it'll cut through. So, um, so a lot of your questions about tuning are, I think, not really about tuning, but about troubleshooting, okay? So if you have a drum that um, uh, is just got lots of overtone, lots of ring, a lot of times I've found that one of the heads may be over tightened, right? So people think I got ring, tighten it up. So I would maybe loosen, you know, loosen and start over using the process that I talked about, doing tensioning slowly, coming up as you go and testing it, listening, trial and error. Um, also a couple of things, tension, head tension, similar to each other. You know, on lower ones, I like the bottom head to be a little bit tighter, but a lot of times I like it pretty similar tension. I uh, want a little bit of dampening for me, uh, unless you have a really, you know, a head with like two plies plus dampening. Um, and then also snares. We didn't really talk about the snares a lot, but basically what I do is I'm gonna loosen the snares uh, using the dial. That's where they're too loose, and then we'll bring them up to where they are tight. Under a, a, a light hit. Then I'm gonna hit hard. And bring them back up a little bit more. Just a couple more clicks. 
to where I don't get that because again, right, the harder I hit that head, those snares are basically coming off of that drum head and then hitting it back. So I don't want the snares to be too tight either because if you get the snares too tight, you actually choke that bottom head. And that's another thing I'll find a lot of people just have those snares cranked so tight and it chokes it. So if the snare, if you have a lot of ring and not much body, something may be choked. The bottom head may be choked by snares um, or it may be over tightened. So I would check those things. Start looser and then slowly come up and find the temperament of your snare. So again, that's um, kind of an overview of what I do. I just walked you through tuning this snare. I'm sorry if I'm, if I'm making it sound more straightforward than it is. I know sometimes it can be a complex thing, but we didn't really talk about composition of snares. But uh, again, that's subjective to what people think and different heads and you can look into different shells and stuff. But a lot of times, you know, higher, the higher you go, the more I like wood snares, the lower you go, the more I like metal snares. For me, it's kind of like a, a range of, you know, the mid, I, it could be either. Uh, but like this at Black Widow actually, is, it's a thinner snare but it does great at mid and high. You know, it can do either. So, um, man, I hope this has been helpful, you guys. If you have any questions, feel free to comment below. I'll help you out as much as I can, answer questions or thoughts. Um, and I'm gonna do a full kit tuning. That's probably your next question is toms and stuff. I'm gonna do a kit tuning video when I replace these heads. I'm gonna go back to clears. My favorite um, tom heads are simply Remo uh, Emperor clears. They're two ply, but a pretty open uh, drum head that again I can muffle and then on the kick I like the clear power stroke 3 by Remo as well so those are my preferences again I kind of like where this is sitting Okay, so now let me um, show you kind of each microphone by itself and what this snare sounds like with the different microphones.